dear students in today's lecture let us know about mass production of biocontrol agents as we became aware of the negative impact of pesticides in human health and on the environment interest is rapidly increasing in developing biological pest control alternatives tremendous advances have been made in beneficial organism technology such as insect predators and parasites however developing effective and economically feasible techniques to mass produce these agents is not enough in india compared to other developed countries in europe and america mass production of parasites and predators is essential for taking up any biological control program the success of biological control by releases of natural enemies largely depends on our ability to mass produce the required biological control agents for timely releases mass production of parasites and predators calls for an elaborate arrangement to culture the host insects in the laboratory in cases where the original host of the concerned biological control agent is either not amenable to mass production or its production is rather tedious and costly a suitable alternative host will have to be employed populations of natural enemies grow with those of their prey but are often a step behind reproduce more slowly or even fail to maintain themselves locally because of seasonal absence of hosts or food in agricultural environments as a result pests can reach economically damaging levels before they are located by predators or parasites hence they should be supported from outside through mass production and feed release programs a place where insects are mass produced or propagated or housed is called an insectary india's first commercial insectary biocontrol research laboratories bcrl was established in bangalore during 1981 since then numerous companies have come up countrywide producing predators mainly coccinellids and chrysopids and a variety of parasites notably trichogramma species and its strains there are 26 central integrated pest management centers cipmc in india in different states to produce biocontrol agents for augmentation still availability of biocontrol agents especially at the local level is a major constraint in promoting biocontrol there are opportunities for small and medium enterprises as they can exploit pest control markets purpose of culturing entomophagous insects beneficial insects that is parasites and predators are reared in the laboratory for several reasons to study the insect itself facts pertaining to its life history habits habitats host relationship and dietary requirement to facilitate the establishment of an introduced or indigenous species by rearing in large numbers for releases to accomplish a wider distribution of a previously established species to supply routinely or at a specified time large number of release for biological control insectary propagation of entomophagous insects involves three closely related entities number 1 beneficial species example skimnus beetles nasalinx thymus trichogramma parasites number 2 host species examples mealybugs housefly pupae corsera eggs etc number 3 host plant or food substrate for example sweet pumpkin for mealybugs or artificial diet containing wheat bran for housefly or broken jowar grains for corsera qualities of an effective biocontrol agent following are the desirable attributes of biocontrol organisms or beneficial organisms to aid in assessment of their capabilities adaptable to the environmental condition or ecological capability host specificity and compatibility multiply faster than the host reproductive potential that is fecundity short life cycle and high female male ratio 
high host searching capacity amenable for easy culturing in laboratory dispersal capacity free from hyperparasitoids synchronized life cycle with host qualities of an effective host the objective of rearing an insect host is to provide a pure population of optimum density on or in an easily manipulated and acceptable medium the host could be natural unnatural or artificial also convenience ease of handling and economics are some important criteria in selecting a host the qualifications of an ideal laboratory insect host for the rearing of beneficial insects are as follows the host should be easy to mass produce under normal conditions of temperature and humidity facilities required to mass produce should be simple it should be acceptable as a perfect factitious host to a variety of parasitoids and predators for example review of literature reveals that all together 60 parasitoids and 15 predators belonging to 17 families in five orders have been reared using the eggs larvae and pupae of carcerus cephalonica as a laboratory host its food media should be dry readily available and can be easily stored production should be economical larvae should not be cannibalistic eggs should be laid loosely so that they are convenient to collect and handle and with high fecundity eggs larvae and pupae should be sufficiently larger and nutritious enough for the normal development of various parasitoids and predators the host should be immune to diseases producing no by products such as honeydew or wax the host should not undergo diapause now production of host plants or artificial diets there are three types of hosts used in rearing entomophagous insects natural host a natural host is one that an entomophagous insect usually attacks in nature for example pink millibug being fed by cryptolemus beetle unnatural host an unnatural host is used in the insectary in place of the natural host mainly for the sake of convenience and economics it is seldom if ever attacked by the entomophagous insect in nature example eri silkworm eggs parasitized by trichogrammatids artificial diet an artificial substrate is one that is prepared or formulated by man such as artificial diets several species of insects now can be conveniently reared on such diets and some progress has been made whereby entomophagous insects can now be directly reared on such artificial diets though large scale rearing is not at practical technology is advancing fast in this direction two predatory groups chrysopa species and coccinellids have been reared in great numbers on synthetic diets and some success has been achieved with dipterans example artificial diet for house fly made out of wheat bran insectary facilities and mass production of natural enemies location of the insectary temperate climate offers the best site for location of an insectary elevated area would be better as it would be cheaper to control heating requirements than to provide equipment for adequate cooling building specification should have provision for sufficient aeration locally available materials construction regulations and architecture play a vital role in the exterior design to have control over climate aspects like colors lowers on windows reflective roofs are important interior design it may have two to three rooms or a big hall with number of partitions depending upon whether the insectary is for research and limited mass production or large scale production and field release for mobility of bulky items the corridors should be sufficiently wide 4 to 5 feet ceiling height 
should be restricted to 7 to 8 feet in order to reduce expenditure on temperature control. Control of dust is of prime concern. To avoid dust, floor can be painted and waxed or covered with vinyl tiles. The walls to be given smooth plaster finishing and painted with glossy moisture resistant paint of white color with light blue or green tinge. Painting facilitates collection of insects and enhances illumination within the room. For storage of articles, proper space should be provided. Utilities Natural light is secondary as it is unpredictable. Number of light fixtures depend on proposed use of insectary. Provide fluorescent tube lights. Insectary should have proper portable water supply. Distilled water is required for preparation of nutrient media. Air conditioning and environmental control. Temperature, humidity and ventilation are very important for an insectary. Individual air conditioning of rooms is better instead of centralized system where there is no control over climate of individual rooms. For mass production of natural enemies recommended in sericulture, ideal design of insectary should have a floor area of 9520 square feet besides 1200 square feet of greenhouse, 1200 square feet mulberry garden and 300 square feet quarantine room. Facilities required for an insectary. The longest axis of the building should face north-south direction. Connection from vacuum compressor and steam or hot water units should be provided to all the rooms. Size of each anteroom should not be less than 6 feet by 6 feet. All the culture rooms should have false ceiling. All the doors and windows should be sliding type. The insect rebuilding quarantine room should have channel all around to fill water to protect from ant attack. Doors of all the anterooms should be with air curtains. Facility of split air conditioner and exhaust fan in each culture room. Electrical insect light traps on corridors and inside all the culture rooms. Walls and floor of culture rooms should have white tiles. All the doors and windows should be insect proof. Colonization, collection and packing of biocontrol agents. Colonization. Colonization means an attempt to establish a community of organisms in a new locality. The primary objective of colonization is to obtain permanent establishment of the natural enemy in at least one locality which may subsequently be used as a source for natural spread. Colonization process is not a simple one but depends mainly on climate, availability of alternate hosts, existing biological competitors, dispersal habit of the species, etc. Climate. Climate plays a key role in the establishment of insects. Failure to adopt to new climate results in non-establishment. The extremes of the climate may affect directly as deterrent of natural enemy survival, indirectly disrupt synchronization of development of natural enemy with that of its host. Hence, it is always desirable to make field releases of natural enemies in diverse climatic areas so that one can encounter at least one most suitable environment. Alternative host. It has been observed by various workers that many failures in the establishment of the insects in the release environment is mainly due to absence of alternate host species needed to carry the natural enemies over periods of unsuitability of principal host. Since it is difficult to understand the alternate hosts required, it is desirable to release them in as many places as possible, that is diverse climatic areas, and record the alternate hosts. When the requirement for alternative hosts is recognized, it is feasible to supply the desired species 
to the immediate colonization area to favor initial establishment of the parasitoids. Biological competitors. It is necessary that sufficient number of host species should be available and in correct stage of attack for the establishment of the insects in the released site because it is common to find certain biological competitors for the host. These competitors may hinder the establishment of new species even though the latter may possess seasonal or other advantages. To overcome such situations, it is often advised to release large number of natural enemies at a single site. It is also suggested to provide additional host colonies under feed cages so that the initial colonization will not be opposed by the competing species. Dispersal The dispersal habit of an insect is of great significance in colonization procedure. Slowly dispersing species are less handicapped in this respect. Collection Collection of the insects in an insect tree may be accomplished by the following three methods. Through insect inherent behavioral taxes, anesthetization and aspiration. Behavioral taxes Through insect inherent behavioral taxes, the most common behavioral taxes of the insects utilized for the collection is phototaxis as entomophagous insects exhibit strong positive phototaxis. The light source may be even light gradient from window or an artificial light. Anesthetization. Anesthetization by combining carbon dioxide and ether was first developed. However, carbon dioxide alone can serve the purpose. Presently, for UG fly parasitoids, carbon dioxide anesthetization is used. Aspiration. Collection by aspiration is by simple mouth aspirators or by using mechanical suction such as similar to that of household vacuum sweepers. Packing. After insects are collected and counted, they are placed in containers for transportation to the release sites. Choice of the containers depends on mode of transport. Convenient storage containers are small heavy paper cartons. Containers must be supplied with streaks of honey as food for the insects as well as bits of wood or paper for resting sites. The transportation may be taken up in the cooler hours or else the insect packing boxes may be covered with wet cloth. Now let us know the mass production techniques of few potential biocontrol agents that are used against major mulberry pests. Potential biocontrol agents against pink millibug infesting mulberry. Ladybird beetles. Several species of ladybird beetles are known to feed voraciously on all the stages of the pink millibug Macronilococcus hirsutus that infest mulberry to cause tukra. Important among them are Cryptolemus montraderi, commonly known as Australian ladybird beetle, and Schimnus coxivora, indigenous species. Cryptolemus montraderi, both adults as well as grubs, are known to predate on all the stages of the millibug. The male beetles can be distinguished from that of female by the coloration of first pair of legs. The first pair of legs in male beetle is brown and other two pairs are black whereas in the female all the three pairs are black. Schimnus coxivora. It is an indigenous coccinellid predator of pink millibug. Adults are light yellowish with dark brown markings along the mid dorsal regions. Mass production of Cryptolemus montraderi or Schimnus coxivora predatory beetles. Colony of pink millibug Macronilococcus hirsutus is raised on sweet pumpkins. After 25 days, about 15 to 20 grams of mealybugs are scraped and put into a round plastic box having aerated lid. Mealybugs are exposed to a set of 10 pairs of Cryptolemus montaseri or 20 pairs of Schimnus coxivora beetles and kept closed. A cotton honey patch should also be provided as a source of food for the adult beetles. 
The beetles during the period of exposure feed on the mealybugs and deposit their eggs singly or in groups of 4 to 12. The grubs are visible in the round plastic boxes within 10 days of exposure. The young grubs feed on the eggs and small mealybugs, but as they grow, they become voracious feeders. Hence, sufficient host food should be ascertained once in two days till pupation. The first beetle from the round box starts emerging on 30th day of exposure to Cryptolemus montezeri or Skirmus coxivora adults. The beetles are collected daily and kept in separate containers for about 8 to 10 days to facilitate completion of mating and pre oviposition period. The beetles are fed on honey 50 is to 50. From each round box, about 375 Cryptolemus montezeri or 750 Skimnus coxivora can be expected. Mass production technology of Acidophagus papae, a natural parasitoid of papaya millibug. Protocol for mass production of Acidophagus papae has been developed by National Bureau of Agriculturally Important Insects, NBAII, Bangalore, using potato sprouts as follows. Procure two months old potatoes, wash in clean water and disinfect using 5% sodium hypochlorite solution. In case of new potatoes where sprouting is not possible or delayed, give a slight and superficial cut on the potatoes using sharp knife and treat with 1 ppm gibberellic acid solution that is 1 mg in 1 liter of water for half an hour. Air dry the potatoes, place over wet cloth in a tray in single layer, cover with a black cloth and keep in dark humid place for germination or sprouting. Within a week, good buds will sprout and are ready for infestation with the nymphs of papaya millibug. Bring pest infested papaya leaf or any other host leaf with a colony of papaya millibug and transfer it onto potato sprouts. Keep the mealybug infested potatoes with sprouts in cages and release the exotic parasitoid adults for parasitization. Cover the cages with black cloth for incubation. After about 10 days, transfer the potato sprouts with mummified papaya mealybugs to wide mouthed jars and cover with coral cloth. Maintain a temperature of 27 to 28 degrees centigrade and a relative humidity of 40 to 60 percent in the insect trade. From 15th day onwards, parasitoid adults start emerging in the jars which may be collected using aspirators and transferred to plastic vials with lids having minute holes for aeration. Now mass multiplication of Trichogramma chylonis, egg parasitoids. Trichogramma species are of common occurrence and distributed throughout the world. They parasitize mainly the eggs of Lepidopterans. In India, it is commercially available for the pest suppression of sugarcane, cotton, sorghum, maize, paddy borers and mulberry caterpillar pests. Trichogramma species are reared on the eggs of rice moth Corsera cephalonica. Freshly collected eggs of Corsera are cleaned of the scales and other foreign matters associated with these and are glued on the trichocards with uniform thin layer using 2 percent gum. The sprinkling of the eggs is done either with a fine sieve which does not allow more than one or two eggs to pass through its hole at a time. Thus 18,000 that is 1 cc UV sterilized host eggs are glued on a trichocard of size 15 into 7.5 centimeter. The adult parasitoids are provided with honey streaks drawn on inner side of the glass jar and secured tightly with muslin cloth and rubber bands. The egg cards are introduced into round glass bottles already containing the just emerged parasitoids and exposed for 24 to 48 hours. The parasitoids readily parasitize the fresh eggs. Under dark condition or subdued light, more than 90 percent parasitization takes place. 
It is also estimated that parasitoids emerging from one egg cord can parasitize 10 to 12 cords of similar size. The parasitoid completes its life cycle in 7 to 9 days at 27 plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade and 75 plus or minus 5 percent RH. Release procedure. Trichuroma has an urge to lay eggs soon after emergence. It is short lived and has to be released on the same day of emergence in the evening or within next 24 hours. Tear the egg cord into small pieces and staple on the ventral side of leaf. In mulberry, the torn pieces can be stapled at the rate of one piece per 100 plants on 13th, 23rd, 33rd and 40th day after pruning. The release should coincide with the egg laying period of the pest. In mulberry, the egg laying of leaf roller is generally observed from 15 to 20 days from the date of pruning. Constraints in mass production. Loss of vigor due to continuous inbreeding through many generations. Hence, effort should be made to increase genetic variability. McCover, during the year 1976, reviewed genetic problems associated with rearing of beneficial insects. Reports on the genetic decline of insect cultures due to prolonged inbreeding can usually be traced to improper maintenance, although in entomophagus, male dominant production can deliberate the culture. The value of biological control in pest management has been well established. In spite of it, the method has not found as much practical application as it deserves to be. One of the main reasons for this is the difficulty in mass producing the natural enemies at economical cost and making these available in adequate quantities for timely releases. Government funded institutions which have been instrumental in the development and validation of biointensive IPM technology cannot be expected to take on the additional responsibility of supplying the various inputs to farmers all over the country. Considering the magnitude of their task in terms of production figures to be achieved and area to be covered, this does not appear feasible. Hence, participation of private commercial producers is essential for translating biological control from precepts to practice. Biocontrol agents are yet to be adopted widely for management of insect pests for a variety of reasons. The absence of standardized protocols for mass production of potential parasitoids and predators and their host insects, the low shelf life of proven biocontrol agents, compounded by lack of refrigerated transport facilities, the absence of prediction models to determine the timing for production scale up and the limited window of demand are some of the bottlenecks in commercialization. Added to this, lack of awareness among farming community due to non-availability of such products with their input suppliers and difficulties experienced by the farmers in switching over to use of live insects, non-availability of strict quality control standards have contributed to slow rate of adoption. However, sustained mass production of biological control agents cannot be achieved without establishing professionally managed, fully equipped and specialized facilities exclusively for this purpose.